All right, Balsam Spa, let's learn a little bit more about series and parallel circuits, and we'll also cover a few topics that we haven't talked about yet uh, in circuits, just a few little topics to wrap up. Uh, the first of them is a really easy concept known as Kirchhoff's first law. His first law is also known as the junction law. A junction is any place that uh, wires come together. So his law simply says, if you add up all the current entering the junction, meaning the sum of the currents, that's capital I, entering a junction, has to equal the sum of the currents leaving the junction. So if you add up all the currents flowing in, it must equal all the current flowing out. This should make perfect sense if 10 of us were walking down the hall and we came to a T in the hallway, and some had to take a left turn and some had to take a right turn. If you add up the people who took the right turn and the people who took the left turn, I out, it must be equal to the number of people who came into the junction. So whenever there's a branch and current has to split, the current entering a junction must equal the current leaving a junction. Here's a pretty simple example. We, if you take a look at the picture, you have current flowing into the junction. And if you look at the direction arrows, it shows that you have 11 amps flowing into the current. If you look at the arrow, here's the junction right here represented by point A. If you look at the arrow, you have 11 amps in. And if you look at the away arrows, there's two of those. I2 flows away from the junction, it's seven amps. And I3 also flows away from the junction and it's four amps. So here you can see the current in is 11 amps and it has to add to the current out, which in this case is also 11 amps. Now a typical test question might have an unknown current leaving the junction. So you would look at the arrows and say, okay, I have 11 amps in and I only have seven amps flowing away from the junction. That can't work. I in has to equal I out. So you could therefore do some subtraction and figure out that the other current, I3, must be four amps. You've probably been asking yourself, do I really need electrons in order to have an electric current? The answer is no. If you have a solution, an electric current can also be supported by the presence of ions. You probably did this in chemistry. If you have sodium or potassium ions in a solution, you can easily conduct electricity, uh, meaning current, through a solution. Who knows? You might even have an LTA question that talks about a current in a solution. There's a couple of really important features of series and parallel circuits that I'd like you to understand. And the first of those is that in a parallel circuit, all the branches are completely independent of each other. They're essentially three separate circuits who are all sharing the battery. If you tinker with one of the branches, for example, if you mess with resistor three, that will not have any effect on branch number two. For example, the, if we put an ammeter in there to measure the current flowing through resistor two, known as I2, that current would not be affected by tinkering with branch three or branch one. In a like manner, if you were to add another resistor, R4, that should also not affect anything happening in any of the other branches because in a parallel circuit, they are all completely independent of each other. So if we take a look at branch two, we have a six ohm resistor, that's R2, and your rule for parallel circuits says that V2 must also be 6 volts because all of the V's are the same in a parallel circuit. So if we do Ohm's law, I2 will be V2 divided by R2. That tells us that we must have a current of 1 amp flowing down that middle branch. If I then were to add a fourth resistor out here, and let's say it's also 6 ohms, but that really doesn't matter, Will that affect anything going on in this branch? Well, we still have a six ohm resistor for R2 and it still gets six volts of potential difference. So one amp of current is still gonna flow down that second branch. So adding the fourth resistor did not affect branch two at all. So if these were light bulbs, adding or removing a light bulb will not affect the brightness of any of the other branches, which is why your house is wired in parallel because when you turn the toaster on, uh, you don't want the blender to then run at half speed. So in a parallel circuit, all items, all branches are independent of each other. This is definitely not true in series. They are very dependent upon each other. 
If you think about a series circuit, it's one big loop. And if you were to suddenly remove one of those items or open the circuit, then all of the other items would stop operating because it would break the uh, continuous branch, the continuous loop that you need for current flow. So in parallel, all branches independent of each other, not so much in series. All right, let's talk about some cause and effect type questions, which tend to be very difficult test questions. In particular, we want to know what's going to happen if you add another resistor to a series circuit. The questions would typically be, what will happen to the equivalent resistance and what will happen to the total current leaving the battery if you add another resistor? We should probably make some predictions, first of all, without looking at the numbers, and then we'll look at the numbers to see what would happen. So what does our rule tell us in series? If you look at the middle part of the electricity page on your reference table, you can see the rule for equivalent resistance says REQ equals the sum of the individual resistors. So if you add another resistor, that must mean that the equivalent resistance must go up. What effect will that have on current? Well, since current and resistance are inverses of each other, if you increase the resistance, that must mean that the current will go down. So the answer, before we run the numbers, should be another resistor being added to a series circuit should increase the equivalent resistance and decrease the total current. Let's take a look. How much current would we have leaving the battery? This meter has been inserted to reach to read I total, which yes, in a series circuit is also equal to I1 and is also equal to I2, but we'll call it I total for now. I total will be V total over R total, and here we have our V total, and we know that R total is the sum of those two, so the total resistance would be 20 ohms. So 60 divided by 20 should be our total current, 60 divided by 20. We have three amps of current originally flowing in the circuit. Now let's add another 10 ohm resistor. How has that changed our equivalent resistance? Well, it is certainly no longer 20 ohms. We have 10 ohms plus 10 ohms plus 10 ohms. Our equivalent resistance has gone up to 30 ohms. That's what we predicted right here. Now what effect will that have on the current? Well, I total will be V total over R total. V total is still 60. R total is now 30 ohms. That means that our total circuit current just went to 2 amps. So we were correct in our prediction that the total current will go down. So in any series circuit, if you add another resistor, it will increase equivalent resistance and therefore decrease the current that flows. Do not be fooled by that rule for current in a series circuit that says I total equals I1 equals I2 equals I3. That rule does not state that you can't change the current in a series circuit. All that rule says is if you measure the current in multiple places, they will be the same. They might change if you add another resistor, but they will always be the same as each other. All right, what happens if you add another resistor to a parallel circuit. Well, in general, parallel circuits are more uh, difficult to understand because of the way the equivalent resistance behaves. If we add another resistor to a parallel circuit, you should remember from our parallel circuit work that the equivalent resistance goes down, which is very tough on the brain because adding another resistor, there's something in our nature that doesn't want the equivalent resistance to go down. We would like it to go up. The best analogy to this case would be uh, in a supermarket. The cash out lanes are parallel to each other, meaning that you don't have to go through both of them. You only have to go through one. Uh, in a parallel circuit, electrons only need to pick one branch. So if you were an electron in a parallel circuit, you wouldn't go through both resistors. You would pick one. So checkout lanes in a grocery store provides an excellent uh, analogy for parallel circuits. If you add another lane in a checkout line, um, then the trip through the store just got easier, meaning its equivalent resistance went down. So if the equivalent resistance goes down, that must mean that the total current must go up. This meter has been inserted to read I total. 
So let's see if our predictions are right that adding another resistor will decrease total resistance and increase total current. What is the resistance in the original circuit if you have two 60 ohm resistors in parallel? Don't say 120 ohms, that would be the series rule. If you do the 1 over rule on your calculator, 1 over 60 plus 1 over 60, and then invert your answer with the little x to the negative 1 button on your calculator, you will see that you have an equivalent resistance of 30 ohms. If you then do I total equals V total over R total, you will see that 4 amps of current will leave the battery. So what happens if we add another 60 ohm resistor? Well, we originally predicted that the equivalent resistance will go down and the current will go up. Let's see. If you have three 60 ohm resistors, if you do 1 over 60 plus 1 over 60 plus 1 over 60 and then invert your answer, you will see that the total is no longer 30. The total has gone down to 20 ohms. Yes, by adding another resistor, we decreased our total resistance. We were correct. What effect will that have on the current that flows? Well, in the old circuit, it was 4 amps. Now, if we take the V total of 120 volts and divide by the R total of 20 ohms, you will see that the 4 amps no longer flows. It would now be 6 amps of current. And that 6 amps shows us that we were right, that the total current will go up when you add another resistor in a parallel circuit. Let's now take a quick look at series and parallel light bulbs. <clears throat> Here I have, using the DC construction kit that you use for your labs, I have three light bulbs, 12 ohm bulbs each, in series with a 12 volt battery. And I've also put three 12 ohm light bulbs in parallel with a 12 volt battery. Now, how will the bulb brightnesses compare if I turn the switches on and let the current flow? Well, the best way to predict brightness is with the potential difference rule. In series, it says that the battery potential difference, V total, is equal to the sum of the individual potential differences. So if there are three bulbs and there are 12 volts to go around and they must share, that must mean that they get four volts each. So I'll say they'll only be semi-bright if I turn the switch on because they have to share the full 12 volts. If we have three 12 ohm bulbs in parallel with the 12 volts, if you look at the potential difference rule, it states that each of the bulbs gets the full 12 volts. So if they're all getting the full 12 volts, they must be nice and happy because uh, they're getting more potential difference than they did before. Instead of getting four, they're each now going to get 12. So I'll flip the switch to turn it on. And you'll note a couple of things about our simulation. You'll note that first, the bulbs are a whole lot brighter in parallel than they are in series. And you should also notice that a whole lot more electrons are now leaving the battery, which means the total current is now higher. And you can see that the total current here is a third of an amp, while in the parallel circuit, using the same three items, the total current is now three amps. So you can probably deduce that the battery would wear out a whole lot quicker in a parallel circuit case than it would in a series circuit case because we're using a lot more electrons, meaning we're drawing a whole lot more current. Uh, now, what would happen if we uh, removed a bulb, meaning unscrew a bulb? Well, in the series case, we can practice, we can simulate unscrewing a bulb by clipping the branch. If I unscrew one of the bulbs, you can see that all of the bulbs go out because we no longer have a continuous loop for our current to flow. We no longer have a complete circuit, so all of the bulbs would indeed go out. What happens if I unscrew light bulb number two in a parallel circuit? Well, if you think back to our earlier conversation, all branches in a parallel circuit are independent of each other. So if I clip this branch, Notice the brightness did not change on the other bulbs. And notice they're still drawing one amp a piece because that's what they want if there are 12 ohm resistors connected to a 12 volt battery. And the current has disappeared down the, uh, down the middle branch, down the second branch. So the total current is two amps. And if we hook them back up, 
they'll go right back to being as bright as they were before with the circuit now repaired. So now, what would happen if we added another bulb? What would happen to the total current? Let's check on the rules that we just did on our previous slides. In the previous slide, it said if we add another resistor in series, let's turn the parallel one off for now, and we'll turn the series one off. If we add another, let's note the current. The current is a third of an amp in series. What happens if we put another bulb in? Well, I'm going to break the circuit. I'm going to insert another bulb. And we'll put a wire in. And let's get the current flowing again. Notice it went from, and it's not a 12 ohm bulb. I can easily make it a 12 ohm bulb. Notice the current went from the third of an amp that it was before to a quarter of an amp. So when we added a resistor in series, resistance went up and current went down. What will happen if we add another bulb in parallel? Let's slide these down to make a little room. Uh, first, let's note the total current. The total current is 3 amps leaving the battery. What's going to happen when I add another branch? Well, let's throw some wires in here. And another wire here. And let's put the bulb in. Come on down here so we can see. And we should probably put an ammeter in here so we can check its current. And we'll finish with another wire here. So now if I turn the circuit on, so what do we think should happen? If you add another resistor in parallel, let's make it another identical resistor. Good. If you add another resistor in parallel, total resistance should go down, so total current should go up. It used to be 4 amps, sorry, it used to be 3 amps, and now it's 4 amps. So indeed, resistance went down and total current went up. I hope these slides and simulations help to increase your understanding of the series and parallel circuits. Hope you enjoyed.